Hello everyone, my name is Aspect and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over refined storage and this is going to be the second episode of my refined storage series. I went over the first half of this mod in my previous video and today I hope to finish the rest of the entire mod. So this one's going to be a bit of a doozy but I'll try to explain everything uh, as thoroughly as possible without dragging on too long. So the first thing we're going over is auto crafting and upgrades. The second thing is wireless grids and network security and then some wireless extras and uh, just a few uh, bonus things that you can do with this mod. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to go over is how to set up a bare bones auto crafting system. Uh, the first item you're going to need is called a pattern. Now this item is used to Right, here's how you craft it and this item is used to encode a crafting recipe into it so that your system knows what to make um, and you just need some quartz and rich iron, redstone dust, and glass. Now the second thing you're going to need is called a pattern grid. Now the pattern grid is made by putting a normal grid with an advanced processor and a pattern and that'll get you the pattern grid and this is what you'll use to encode your patterns into the recipes that you need and I'll be showing all this in a minute here. Uh, the third thing you're going to need is the actual block called the crafter. Um, one thing to note about this block, it does have a direction, so it does have a front face that looks like this. Uh, it looks like that when it's turned on, um, and it has sides and a bottom. To make this, you're going to want the destruction core, construction core, uh, machine casing, two advanced processors, and four quartz enriched iron in the corners like that. Um, I'm not completely sure, I'm, I'm fairly certain you need uh, these two in the correct order, so this one on the top, that one on the bottom. The other two things are some optional monitors. Now these are really useful if you have a big system going on, but they're not required. Um, the one I would recommend is called the crafting monitor. To make this you need uh, three glass, two patterns, two improved processors, a quartz enriched iron, and a machine casing. This is going to allow you to view the current crafting jobs and what exactly is going on. Um, the other is called the crafter manager, which is made similarly except the uh, improved processors has turned into advanced processors and you have two crafter blocks on the top and bottom here and then the machine casing in the middle. The crafter manager is used to uh, view all of your crafters and the recipes that they have in them and I'll be showing all that now. So this is the basic auto crafting setup that you'll need to use uh, just for basic auto crafting and the way this works it's a little bit misleading to call this auto crafting because what it does is it gives you an option inside of this grid to click on something and then craft a certain amount of it so we'll go over that now go ahead and grab a pattern and you can get into your pattern grid and you'll see that there is when you first open it it'll look like this there is a crafting grid down here. Now this grid is used to encode patterns. So if I put this pattern up here, I gotta tell it, I gotta specify exactly what I want it to make. So I wanna make these oak logs into planks. Now the way to do this is to set it inside and you know, as if you were gonna craft it, but instead of being a crafting grid, this is a pattern grid. So it doesn't actually craft it if you click on this. Instead, you can create with that button and now you can see it says pattern for oak planks and it knows how to create that. You can go ahead and clear this and it won't actually use any of your wood or anything like that. It's just meant to specify what you're trying to do. So now I have this pattern. You can see if I hold down shift in my inventory, it shows you what it's going to make. So you can check if you have a bunch of patterns in your inventory, which ones are which. And you're going to want to place a crafter down next to your controller or just in your network. So you have a drive, controller, uh, pattern grid, and a crafter. And the crafter just has a simple bar here where you put the patterns. So if I place a pattern in here, it's ready to start crafting. And you can see that in the grid, there's now an option to actually craft oak planks. So if I click on this, it'll ask me how much I want to make. Uh, and this is how many oak planks, not how many logs I want to use. It's how many planks I want to make. So if I specify 12 logs, or 12 planks. It'll say three oak logs used and then you can click start and you can see it's gonna start crafting those 12 planks and I can take those out. There they are. Now 
the other two monitors that I showed you are pretty useful to tell what's going on. So as you can see, if I put down the manager and the monitor, try not to get them mixed up because um, they have very similar names and they look very similar. But the, uh, the manager is for your actual crafter blocks and the monitor is for the in-process crafting. So you can see this one looks like this. Uh, it looks like that start screen. So if I start, let's say, I don't know, 128, which is half a stack of logs, you can see it starts making them, but the monitor is going to tell me more specifically where it's at. So you can see this number is going down as it has less to do, and uh, this stock is going down. And the crafter actually takes in the logs. So as it said, it needed to you know use a half stack of logs there. It actually took those out immediately out of the pattern grid and placed them in the crafter and then started crafting it. So while it's crafting, the full stock of the ingredients will be removed from your stock in here. It'll be put inside the crafter. And the crafter manager is just used to manage patterns. So if you have a pretty big system and you have a lot of crafters doing different things, you can use this to kind of manage where your patterns are and switch them around. Now, I'm not sure what the best way to rename your crafters are. Uh, that's, that's odd. It's said this is a crafter manager, but I, I don't know if you can do that to specify in here which one is which. Um, but if I maybe go oak, you can see it pulls up the patterns. Uh, maybe it's just a good way to, to manage your patterns individually instead of which craft of in, because if you dragged it from here to another one, and if you have like four of them, it would be hard to tell which crafter it's actually gone into. So that is how to make a basic auto crafting setup. And as you can see, it's a sort of quote unquote click to craft. And the other thing about this is it doesn't allow you to craft until you've taken everything out. So it only allows you to craft once it's empty. So it's very, very bare bones. Um, pretty useful for some starting stuff if you're just going to mine or something and you need to you know, craft a bunch of, uh, I don't know, something up, then you can just start it and go on your merry way. Um, so now we're going to go over some additional crafter mechanics. Uh, these crafters are pretty useful. They have a lot of different features that they do, um, but the two main ones that are, I, I think, the most useful and uh, essentially most of their other features are pretty pointless. Um, but these are, these are the main two things that they do. And the first thing is chaining crafters and processing recipes, quote unquote processing, because that's the label they get. So I have here a pulverizer from Thermal Expansion. I, I thought I was going to say what mod it was. Therm, thermal Series, Thermal Expansion. And what this does is it pulverizes objects into, you know, dust or whatever. And I want to use it to pulverize these blocks of quartz into nether quartz. But I can't do that with this, this crafting grid because this is not a crafting table. It's a different thing. So what you can do is, first of all, configure this to have the right faces. So if you remember the, uh, oh, the, it's on the top, <laughs> the importer from the last episode, I've configured so that the top face is the output, and then I have the blue face is the input. So it's the blue face is here. You can see the input is going to go in this slot, and the output is going to be here. And I have three crafters uh, linked together into the side of this pulverizer. Now, you can actually see it's changed this to be called Pulverizer because it's telling you what machine is connected. Uh, that's why it says Crafter Manager. Okay, that's why it says this. Um, you can see it says Pulverizer on all three of these, which means they're chained up to the same machine because they're linked. And if you see that dot that I was showing you earlier, that's how you can tell what the front is. So you got to chain them all up like that. And you can do this to put more recipes than this bar is capable of handling. So if you have like 30 different recipes that you need to use one machine for, this is the way to do that. Uh, and as long as they're all connected to the network, I believe only one of them has to be plugged in as long as they're all facing each other and it should link them all. So to do this sort of recipe, um, you're going to first go into your pattern grid and switch this to processing. Now this is a more general sort of crafting and it's useful for other mods uh, crafting machines and it all it does is encode a pattern to essentially just have input and output. So you can encode a processing pattern by taking a pattern out 
putting it in this slot as normal and specifying exactly what it's going to make. So I want to pulverize one quartz block into four nether quartz. And that's the recipe that the pulverizer does. And you can click on this inside of this menu and specify that you only need one. So it's going to say input one block of quartz, output four nether quartz. So now that I have this pattern, I can go ahead and put this in my pulverizer crafter menu. And once I do that, I should be able to start crafting. So once you have an empty slot in here, it's going to give you the option to craft more. And I can request, I don't know, 20. Start. And you can see it outputs them into the pulverizer. It outputs five because it's, you know, five blocks makes 20 quarts. And you can see it's going to start extracting all that out and going ahead and throwing it back into your system if you have the importer set up. So you can see it's going to start chugging those nether quartzes in. So that's how you chain uh, processors or you chain crafters and do processing recipes. Uh, the other thing is that the crafter also has redstone modes. Um, a lot of other things in this mod also have redstone modes, uh, but this is, I thought, a good way to explain it. So again, I have a pulverizer here. Uh, actually, I don't. This is a redstone furnace. Um, and this redstone furnace is, you know, just a smelting furnace. And the bottom face is configured to be input. So below the crafter is inputting into the bottom. And then the side, the orange side, left, is uh, importing. So coming out of the furnace and into the system. And what I want to do is melt some iron ore into some iron ingot. Pretty simple. And the way to do that is to get a processing pattern, as I said before, where you've put an ore here and an ingot here, and then you put it in your crafter. Um, so the redstone modes can let you do some kind of bonus uh, control over your system. Uh, if by default, it just ignores redstone. It doesn't bother with it. But the first setting is that the redstone signal unlocks auto crafting. So if I have, oh, actually a quick note, um, the redstone stuff only works on processing um, recipes because if it's just a normal one, it'll just make it inside the block and it's not going to bother with the import export type deal. So this only works with uh, processing type recipes. So if I go ahead and hit craft one start, you can see it doesn't do anything. And that's because if I go into my crafting monitor, you can see crafter is locked because it's on redstone signal unlocks auto crafting. But if I go ahead and hit this, it's going to go ahead and start putting in the one iron ore that I ordered, smelting it and importing it back into my grid. Now the next setting is the opposite redstone signal locks auto crafting. So now that it's on, if I order another one, same type of deal, it's locked. And if I turn it off, it goes up. Uh, the last setting is pretty useful. It's called Redstone Pulse Inserts Next Set. So let's say I order about, I don't know, 10. And it's going to put one in and start it. But it's not going to put another. That's, you know, that's weird. Why is it not putting another one? You can see it's locked. And it's not going to do another one until it's on and I'm back off. And that'll put in another one. So you can use some sort of system to time things with redstone and however you want to do your redstone but every time you pulse it it'll put another one in and that's how you're gonna do that redstone mode let me go ahead and cancel that should have finished throw these off so those are the four redstone modes that are useful for crafting and only for your processing recipes so now I want to go over the upgrades that this mod offers and the upgrades are very versatile. They do a lot of useful things, and all of them require a base uh, thing to craft them, and this is just the base upgrade. Uh, this is maybe you could word it as a blank upgrade, but to make this, it's f uh, six quartz enriched iron, two glass, and one improved processor. Now, once you have this, you can make four basic upgrades, and there's three more that'll go over up there uh, for a total of seven. Uh, and the first being is the speed upgrade. Uh, this one is five quartz enriched iron, three sugar, and that base upgrade. That's how you make the speed. Uh, 
This is called the range upgrade, which instead of sugar, you put ender pearls with your quartz iron and base upgrade. Uh, this one's called the crafting upgrade, which has the five iron again, but then it has a construction core and uh, the blank upgrade and two crafting tables. And the final one is the stack upgrade, which is a little bit more of a strange one. It has five sugar and four speed upgrades to make the stack upgrade. Now let's go up to the second platform to upgrade land and look over what these actually do and examples of how to use them. So the first being the speed upgrade, uh, this is going to give you more machine speed at the cost of extra power usage. So if I go ahead and power on this coal generator, it's going to start up my controller here. And I've got two grids and two importers, which are importing. Uh, this is actually an exporter. But anyway, I've got this importing sea pickles. And now that my controller is started up, you can see it's going to begin doing that. However, if I take those speed upgrades out and go ahead and put those into the importer for you can see it's going to go way faster. And so that's thing's just going to start pumping them out. Now you can also use these for the exporter. And if I go ahead and specify to the exporter that I want to start putting sea pickles out, I can do the same type of deal, speed upgrades. And the exporter is still a little slower than the importer, but it, uh, it does speed up a little bit with the speed upgrades. The next upgrade is the stack upgrade, and I'm skipping around a little bit in the order that I specified there, but uh, this applies pretty closely, and what this does is allow these two blocks, the importer and exporter, to import and export a stack at a time. Now, this thing only works with one stack upgrade. If you put more than one inside of it, it won't do anything more, so it's really only useful to have one in each. Um, and it gives you more transfer size and a little bit more power usage. Um, if you look in here, these are both using nine per tick. And before I had put the four upgrades, I didn't show it, but they were using one. So as you can see, it uses a little extra one FE. Um, the sea pickles that I'm going to take out here to show this stack upgrade. You can see that they will get put in a stack at a time, which is pretty useful if you need. I need all of these. I don't know what it's doing. If you want to do a lot of things fast. So if I go ahead and put a stack upgrade in there, four speed upgrades, you can see it's going really fast and it's taking them out a stack at a time, putting them all in there instantly. And then same deal with this stack upgrade and more speeds puts them in quickly. Uh, the stack upgrade also works by itself. It'll just put one stack in slower like that. And there we go. Easy transfers around. The third upgrade I want to go over is called the range upgrade. And this is used to increase your wireless range uh, at the cost of power usage. Now, I will go over wireless in a little bit and how to do it. But for now, you just need to know that the upgrade goes inside the wireless transmitter right here. And it increases the distance that you need uh, that you can access the wireless grid. So if I get this creative grid, which is charged up already, and four range upgrades, place them inside the transmitter, you can see the block count goes up. So 48, and you can see if I go right here, you can see it's working pretty close. And you, if I go put these in, you can see the range upgrade allows me to walk a lot farther away and have it still work. And that's how that works. So it's pretty easy. Um, it's useful just if you have a bigger base and you need to get around and use your grid from wherever. Now this upgrade is called the crafting upgrade. And this one gets a little more complicated, but it's really, really useful. And it allows you to automate a lot better at the cost of power usage. And this is essentially the next step to not having one click to craft, as I was saying. Um, the crafting upgrade can be used with the exporter mainly. Uh, it can be used with the constructor, as I said here, and the uh, interface, but the interface is a bit annoying to use. Uh, it's essentially a block that is both an importer and an exporter, but 
I could maybe go over that sometime else. I didn't in this uh, video. But the way this works is when an exporter going out of your system has a crafting card or a crafting upgrade in it, it is able to request crafting for a job. So in this example, I have a pulverizer, which is taking input from the left, so it's going in that way, and output from the back. And the output is configured, or the input is configured to put in blocks of quartz. But if I power up this system, you can see that I actually don't have any blocks of quartz. I only have normal quartz. And if I have however much quartz in there I want, instead of clicking to craft here, because I have the recipe in there, one block of quartz and some speed upgrades or oak planks, I'll go over that in a minute, but I have the recipe in my crafter and I want it to automatically craft quartz blocks and put them in the pulverizer. So to do that, because I don't have any of these, I can put the crafting card in it. And you can see it'll automatically start making a quartz block and putting it in the pulverizer. And then once these are finished making uh, nether quartz, it will automatically export back into the system through the importer. Uh, this is actually a closed loop, as you can probably notice, but obviously you wouldn't want just a loop uncrafting and crafting it, but it, it was kind of funny for the example. So that's how you do that. Uh, another good way to do it is to simply eliminate one-click crafting you can just have an exporter into a chest. And so an example here, I'm asking it to export oak planks. I have the pattern in there and I have logs. All I need to do is put in a card, crafting upgrade. And automatically, at least once it's done with the quartz, I believe, or unless maybe it's just run out of power too. No, that's, that's annoying. For now, we're just gonna use a creative controller since I guess this stuff uses more power than I thought, but. As you can see now, I'm actually going to stop this loop as well, so it's not taking priority in the crafter. Um, once it's done, it flashes for a moment, but you can see it's going to automatically start crafting uh, oak planks and taking them out and putting them in the chest. And you can put speed upgrades in here to make that faster. Um, and you can just have it automatically always crafting oak planks and requesting them, putting them in. And so whenever this has logs, it'll automatically start taking them out, crafting them, putting it in the chest. So it's really useful if you want to fully start automating things. You get back from mining, you have you know, whatever you need. You have you know, logs, you get back from mining trees and you toss them in there and you can go on your merry way and it'll make planks for you. And you can have, you know, another one from here go into like sticks or whatever else you needed. So the crafting card is super versatile and really useful. Uh, the next things we're going to go over are some extra upgrades that are pretty useful. Um, these two I would say are less useful than the regulator, which is that one, but I'll go over them anyhow. These are the silk touch and fortune upgrades. These work directly with the deconstructor uh, or it's just called de uh, destructor. That's what it's called. And when you can dig blocks up with this thing, which mines blocks, uh, if you have like let's say a coal ore in front of it, it's going to give you one coal, uh, as if you had mined it with a pickaxe or something. But that might not always be what you want. So you can use these to essentially enchant this thing. And the way you make these is uh, the silk touch one. You need a silk touch book. Uh, five in quartz enriched iron, two bookshelves, and the blank upgrade. The fortune one works the exact same. I have the fortune three one in this example, but it also works with fortune two and fortune one, which you can see here, fortune one, fortune two. And yeah, bookshelves, quartz iron. Uh, these upgrades can be placed directly into the deconstructor, destructor, my bad. And you can see if I put a normal coal, coal ore, let's do that, it's just going to put one coal. But if I put the silk touch upgrade and place one again, then you can see the coal ore came through. And the fortune works as you would expect. Place it there, I get more than one, works pretty well. 
Uh, so those are pretty useful for certain setups uh, if you have the destructor in your system. Uh, this other one is the regular regulator upgrade. So this is useful for keeping a certain stock in a chest or another inventory, um, but not going over that. So if you w have an exporter, and let's say you want to keep a certain amount of something in here, but you don't want to take all of it out, this is a pretty useful upgrade for you. And the way to make this is with five quartz and witch iron, uh, two redstone dust, one blank upgrade, and a redstone comparator. And once you have your system up and running, the I must have put a creative controller here. The strategy is to place one inside of the exporter. I already have one. Never mind. And if you have some sort of item you're exporting, you can specify that you only want to keep a stock of, let's say, five. And you can see it keeps five in there. If I take it out, it'll fill five back up, and then it'll stop again. And it'll always stop at that exact limit. And this can be used in tandem with the crafting upgrade I just showed you over there. Um, so if I wanted to have, let's say, always 32 oak planks, I could say regulator and put 32 oak planks in this. And then I could say crafting upgrade. And if I had logs in here, it would automatically always take out enough to make 32 planks and fill in the chest until I take them out and it would redo it. So this is really useful uh, just if you need to keep some like drop boxes or uh, areas where you always want to have a little bit of stock of something, really nice for that. So those are all the upgrades that you can use in refined storage. Now we're going to go on to the wireless grids and the network security. So to get started with these wireless grids, uh, you're going to need to craft the actual item itself. Uh, the wireless grid is going to be advanced processor, ender pearl, six quartz enriched iron, and a grid. And there's also a pretty useful wireless crafting monitor, which is the same crafting setup, but with the crafting monitor block instead of a grid block in the middle. And these can both be used with the wireless transmitter, which is the same exact recipe, but with a machine casing in the middle instead. So you're going to want a basic setup, which is, I have here just a drive controller and grid. And if I put some stuff in here, and you place a wireless transmitter on the top, uh, which you saw briefly over there, uh, you can see it's got a range and it's lit up when it has power. And the way to do this is to first get a wireless grid, and you're going to need to charge it. And refined storage doesn't actually have a charging block by default. So again, I have thermal expansion installed. The energetic infuser is just a charging station and I can place this in here and it fills up right away. And same with the crafting monitor, which I don't have a crafting monitor set up here, so it won't really show. But once you have your grid filled up with power or even before you fill it up with power, you can right click, uh, sorry, shift click on this and you can see it's lit up and says linked to the coordinates for this transmitter. And now I can go back and open it, take this sampling out and use it no problem, put it back in. Uh, a thing to note here is opening this menu costs 30 power and then each time you move one item in or out it costs 3 power. So keep that in mind as you're doing a lot of moving things around but if you have a decent power setup it should not be an issue. Same deal with the crafting monitor. I don't have an actual crafting station set up with this, so it's not going to do anything, but it works the exact same way. The next thing I want to go over is network security. Uh, to get started with this, um, well, actually, let me explain what it's for. This is a way that you can block off anybody from accessing your system. And you can lock it up so that people that don't have permission aren't able to open it up or do anything with it. Um, to start with this, you're going to need the network card, which is crafted with uh, two paper, one advanced processor, and six quartz iron. And the other thing you're going to need is a security card, which is made with two of those network cards we just made, six iron again, and an advanced processor. And this card is going to be again used for the security manager, which is the block that you actually hook up 
to your system. So to make the security manager, you're going to need a chest, four iron, uh, quartz iron, a machine casting, and three security cards. Now, the easiest way to do this is by setting a basic system here again. You know, you want to guard your sea pickles. You're going to want to grab a security manager and go ahead and set it down on your system. And this menu is going to have a section at the top, uh, a middle area, and some settings. And how to use this is each security card is going to be linked to a player. Now, you can specify first what player you want to have this linked up to. So if I shift and right click with this, it lights up and you can see it's bound to my player. And now you can go in and set up what permissions do you want this player to have. So I can start selecting what permissions I want them to have. And once you take it out and put it in the top, the security is active. So before you put anything in there, anyone can use the system. As soon as you put one card in, it starts looking for this player and putting those permissions in. However, you might still notice that even with, let's say, your friend on one card with no permissions, it they'll still be able to use it. And that's because, or actually they won't be able to, but anyone else can still use it. Um, having a blank card in there is a global card. So if I just have a blank security card with nothing, that means that nobody else can use it besides me. And you could even say like, Globally, anyone can insert, but I'm the only one that can do everything else. Now, there are exceptions to this. Uh, the server operator is able to access every system, and the one that placed this security manager block down is also able to access it regardless. Um, but you can see if I uncheck all of these for myself, I'm actually not able to access these, but I can still use this because I placed it down. So. Uh, I can't really show an example of that at the moment, but I'm sure you get the idea. So the next thing I want to go over is network transmitters and receivers. And these are a bit of a wireless extra. They're not required and they're a little expensive and you'll see why in a minute. Um, but what they do is they're wireless cables. So if you have two parts of your same system that you want to link up from far away, this is the right block for that. Um, if you don't want to place a ton of cables down. Uh, the first is the transmitter and you'll see why this is expensive. You need one netherite ingot, uh, three ender pearls, a construction and deconstruction core in that configuration, and two advanced processors. To make the network receiver you need to flip this thing on its head. So netherite on the top, ender pearls on the bottom, and switch where the processors are. Uh, to use this, you need a network card that we crafted earlier. And how it works is you'll have a base setup. So I've got here uh, 64 blocks of nickel. And I want to access them from uh, quote unquote far away right here. But obviously you would want to set it up much farther. I'm not completely certain if there is a range to these or not. Uh, but from what I gather, I don't think so considering it doesn't say um, but what you're going to want to do is only the transmitter has a, a menu, the receiver doesn't. But what you need to do is right click on that receiver and you can see where it's linked. And once I put it inside the network transmitter, you can see it says it's three blocks away. And I can access those blocks of nickel, no problem. And you can see it removed it from here. So I can use both grids on the same system even when they're not actually connected by cables. So I think that is everything else in refined storage that I didn't cover last episode. I hope this was useful and if there's anything else in this mod, which I don't believe there is that you guys want to see, I can make a little mini video on it. But as far as I know, that is everything in this mod covered uh, from top to bottom. So thank you everyone for watching and I believe I'll be Hopefully doing another mod tutorial soon. I know it's been a little bit since I posted last, but I'll be able to post a few times and get some other mods you guys want uh, uploaded. So thank you for watching. Uh, this has been Aspect, and I'll see you.